My name is Juan Nino. I am a private detective specializing in white collar crimes such as money laundering, corporate fraud, and occasionally stolen art. But a few days ago, I received an anonymous email asking if I would be interested in investigating the history of Medellin, Colombia. My curiosity got the best of me and I kindly replied to the anonymous email with my typical rate of $150 worth of Bitcoin per hour. I sent my Coinbase address and was pretty certain I would never hear back. But to my surprise, 10 minutes later, I received a notification from Coinbase that I had received a transfer of $6,000 worth of Bitcoin. I immediately checked my email to find our anonymous person had kindly replied, I will deposit a full week's worth of your time into your Coinbase account. Being an honorable detective, I immediately thanked the anonymous person for being so prompt, and I promised a full report of the history of Medellin within 10 days. I then did what any good detective would do. I had a great night of sleep, I woke up, took a shower, had some coffee, and I made a plan. The plan was simple, buy a flight to Medellin, Colombia, and begin researching what the history of the city was all about. As I landed in Medellin, I was immediately blown away by how green the city is. Medellin lies in the middle of the Andes Mountains in the Valley of Aburrá. The entire metropolitan area is made up of 10 different municipalities, of which Medellin is by far the largest. The total population of Medellin in 2021 is approximately 2.6 million people. And the entire metropolitan area is close to 4 million people. I eventually made my way down the mountains into the city and I checked into my hotel, located in an area of Medellin known as El Poblado. My initial research led me to discover that there are two differing stories as to when Medellin was founded, but the more commonly accepted version is that Spaniards, led by Jerónimo Luis de Gelo, first visited the Valley of Aburrá in 1541, but no major settlements were established, and it wasn't until 1616 that San Lorenzo de Aburrá was founded by Francisco Herrera Campuzano in what is now modern-day El Poblado. People in Medellin and the entire region of Antioquia are known as Paisas, and Paisas are known for being hardworking, creative, independent, and very self-driven. Some historians believe this Paisa spirit can be traced back to the original European settlers and their desire to find a better life in the Americas. On the 2nd of November in 1675, the growing settlement of San Lorenzo de Aburrá was officially given the title of Villa, or town, by Queen Mariana of Austria. And the Villa de Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria de Medellín was officially established. The new town was named after Don Pedro de Portocarrero y Luna, Count of Medellín. It was a good start to my investigation, so I sent a quick email to my anonymous client, letting him know my research was underway and that I would be taking the next few days to further investigate the history of Medellin, Colombia. After Medellin was founded in 1675, it did not experience significant growth until the early 1800s. Up to that point in time, the capital city of the region was Santa Fe de Antioquia, and it wasn't until 1826 that Medellin would become the capital city of Antioquia. Medellin's rapid growth was largely influenced by three main factors, coffee, textiles, and the construction of the Ferrocarril de Antioquia, or in English, the Antioquia Railway. Colombia was quickly becoming one of the most important exporters of coffee around the world, and this created a massive need for quick access from Colombia's Andean region to its Caribbean ports. The construction of the Antioquia Railway provided the ideal solution to transport coffee and other exports from Medellin to a small town on the banks of the Magdalena River, Puerto Berrio. From Puerto Berrio, all exports could easily make their way up the Magdalena River to Colombia's Caribbean ports and eventually to the industrial powers up north. This, combined with the discovery of coal in Antioquia and the construction of important hydroelectric plants, 
provided Medellin with the infrastructure to become Colombia's second largest city and an industrial powerhouse. Lastly, the textile industry, led by the Coltejer Company, was a major catalyst in Medellin's commercial and entrepreneurial growth. I arrived back in the hotel that afternoon and I felt I had gained some great insight into Medellin's history and how it had grown to become the city it is today. Before coming to Medellin, I was aware of Colombia's violent past. In 1948, presidential candidate Jorge Gaitan was murdered in Bogotá, Colombia's capital city, and this sparked an unimaginable era of violence in the country. These events led to the birth of different armed groups in Colombia. Hundreds of thousands of farmers fled the violence in the countryside and sought refuge in Colombia's major cities. These massive migrations led to the formation of comunas, or slums, like Medellin's famous Comuna 13. The 1950s, 60s, and 70s in Colombia were marked by major political instability and economic struggles. At the end of the 1970s, the Medellin drug cartel began to gain momentum, and they were led by Medellin's most notorious figure, Pablo Escobar. I knew most people were very aware of Medellin's and Colombia's past, but I decided to write a quick email to my anonymous history enthusiast, letting him know that I really wanted to focus my last few days of research on what Medellin is today and all the beautiful things I had heard about it. Later that night, as I was on my iPhone, I received a reply from my anonymous friend, letting me know that he completely agreed with my thoughts and that he was really looking forward to seeing my finished report on Medellin. Medellin is known as the city of eternal spring. The city's proximity to the equator means there are no seasons as we know them in the States. Medellin's elevation of 1,495 meters above sea level means the weather feels like spring for the entire year. Medellin is the only city in Colombia with a metro system. The metro runs mainly from south to north, and it is complemented by secondary lines, such as El Tranvía and cable cars, which enable Medellin citizens to easily make it up the mountain. The city of Eternal Spring is also the birthplace of some of Colombia's most famous artists, world-renowned painter and sculptor Fernando Botero, and singers J Balvin, Maluma, and Juanes. Medellin is one of the most innovative cities on the planet. In 2013, the Urban Land Institute awarded Medellin the Innovative City of the Year Award, largely due to Medellin's outstanding cable car system, electric escalators in places such as La Comuna 13, and the large variety of world-class art galleries, libraries, and public spaces. Every August, for 10 days, Medellin celebrates the world-famous Feria Las Flores, which is a cultural celebration of the Paisa spirit, and its main event is the Desfile de Silleteros. The Silleteros carry silletas on their backs, each one displaying a beautiful work of art made from flowers. Offering a large variety of shopping malls, sporting events, and cultural attractions, Medellin also has a thriving gastronomy scene, featuring world-class restaurants, amazing coffee shops, and flavors inspired by many different nations around the world. The next day, I felt the report was finished, so I opened up my MacBook and wrote the last email to my anonymous friend. I let him or her know I felt extremely grateful that I had taken the challenge of investigating the history of this amazing city. It was a vastly different task than stolen art and fraud, but I had thoroughly enjoyed it. The history of our planet, nation, city, and community is extremely important. It has shaped our present and it will in some ways continue to impact our future. Hopefully we can all be inspired by the amazing acts of love and kindness we have seen throughout history. Hopefully we can learn from the injustices and hopefully humanity can build a better future based on love, compassion, and kindness. I think the people of Medellin are a great example of perseverance, innovation, and authenticity. It is proof that we can all rise out of the ashes and flourish once again.
All right, what's up guys? So total buzzkill, I'm not actually a real detective as much as I'd like to be. I just really wanted to build a character for the video. The history of Medellin and everything else is factual. I did my absolute best to research it well and to research it from a very neutral point of view and allow you, the viewer, to arrive at your own conclusions. The video is from my sister Juli. Juli is my bestie and her love for literature and all our trips to Barnes & Noble this past year have really just inspired me to become a better storyteller. So thank you so much, Jules. You're the best, dude. And I wanted to say also thank you to my girlfriend, Steph. She was an amazing support for this video. She was my camera assistant. She helped me write the script. Um, so yeah, muchas gracias, Steph. And I'm going to be coming out with a full vlog of my past month here in Medellin as a digital nomad. It's going to be really fun. You're going to get to meet some amazing people and see Medellin from a very unique point of view, which I'm so excited about. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure that you do so you don't miss out. And seriously, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon. Nos vemos. Ciao.